Let's look at this curvilinear motion problem, and this is going to use n and t coordinates, so normal tangential. Um, what we've got here is a plane. We've got a package being dropped out of the plane. It's flying along with a constant, and it's important there, horizontal velocity of 150 feet per second. We want to find the normal tangential components of acceleration and the radius of curvature of the path of motion at a couple different points. First one, we want to do that at the moment uh, the package is released at A, so right here. And then the second one, we want um, to do it right before it strikes the ground at B over here. All right, so let's see what to do here. All right, first of all, let's remember what we're looking for, right? We want the normal tangential components, so I want AN, I want AT, and then we want rho. Rho is the radius of curvature, right? So we want those three things at those two locations. So let's do part A where we're looking at point A. And let's go ahead and let's just draw a picture here. So let's say that's the, the box and the plane and everything. And let's label our N and T system. Okay, and I know by looking at this problem that I wanna use the, the N and T coordinates because first of all, it tells us to find the normal tangential, but we also have this little path here. Okay, um, so it's a curved path. So we know we can use N and T. Now the curvature is like this, right? So our N axis would direct towards the center of curvature like that. And then the tangential is basically gonna be tangent to the path, which is along this line of velocity in this case. So T would be here, okay? So now we've got that. And let's think about what acceleration we have. What's our magnitude of acceleration going to be on this one? Well, once this box drops, the only thing acting on it is going to be gravity, right? Because we're looking at the package. So gravity is going to act straight down. Notice this is feet per second, so we're going to have 32.2. All right. And then now that we have that, let's see if we can find our components. All right, so AT. Now, let's think about what AT is. Remember, AT is just like a regular acceleration. Like you've got a car that is accelerating at three feet per second squared. Okay, that would be an AT. So in this case, what would we have? Well, for this problem, we would have zero for AT. And the reason for that is, is because we have a constant horizontal velocity. So anytime we have that constant velocity, we're going to have an AT of zero. So let's write AT is zero because V is 150 and that is constant. Okay, so there can't be a tangential acceleration. So this is our first answer. That was simple, right? Now let's find AN. Well, now look at this picture here. Looking at that, what would AN be? I know you're wanting to say V squared over rho, right? But do I need to do that right here? I don't because this gravity term lies right on the N axis, okay? So that means AN is gonna be 32.2 feet per second squared. Let's box that one. Okay, so on these problems, it's always a good idea to draw a little diagram, label your N and T frame, and then go from there. Next thing we need is rho, radius of curvature. So let's find that. Now, we know that the normal acceleration can be set to V squared over rho. Okay, well, I'm looking for this. I have this, and do I have V? I do have V at A, right, because it was 150. So I have everything except for rho, so let's plug those values in, and then we can solve. So the left side will be 32.2, and then it's going to equal V, so 150 feet per second, square that thing, and that term, and then we've got rho on the bottom. Now let's solve for rho. So rho will be 698. 0.76 feet. Okay, 
So there's that. Not too bad for that one, right? That one was pretty straightforward. Now the next one we gotta go to B down here right before it hits. So this one will be a little bit different. Now remember we're measuring the motion of the package, okay? So initially when it drops out at A, the package is moving along with the plane, right? So the package had the velocity 150. Down here, do we still have that? Is that still gonna be the magnitude of our speed? Mm, probably not, right? Because it's followed this path, we've had acceleration of gravity on it. So we need to actually calculate the new velocity. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Before we do that though, let's draw a little picture. So let's draw our curved path. And let's say our box or package is right here. And let's label our frame here. Okay, so N, let's say goes this way. This would be T. Um, and then we're gonna have a velocity. All right, so the velocity, let's just say is VB, like that. And then we're gonna have gravity, right? Can't get away from gravity. So let's say gravity, that should be going straight down. It looks kind of crooked the way I have it written. But. So that's 32.2 feet per second squared. All right. So now we've got this, and let's go ahead and label a couple more things. Let's switch pins again here. So I've got VB here, and let's put our X and Y frame on here. There would be X, and let's say Y is going down. No, you can't see it here, but this is Y going that way. Okay. So now if I've got this VB, that means I've got a VBX and a VBY, okay? So let's look at that. Okay, so we need VB. And the way we're gonna get this is by using our kinematic equations. Let's look at the X direction, then we'll look at the Y direction. So if I want to find my new x component of velocity at b, let's look at this equation. I've got vb, it's going to equal va, and these are in the x directions, plus ax times t, right? Well, what is ax? ax is going to be zero, right? Because gravity lies on the y-axis. So this goes to zero, which means vbx has to equal vax, so that means VBX has to be 150 feet per second, okay? And then for the Y direction, well this time we've got this 1500 feet we have to worry about, and I've got acceleration in the Y direction, right? I've got gravity. So for this one, let's do VBY squared equals VAY squared plus two times AY times your final y minus your initial y. All right, so here we have this, and we're gonna say the ground here is the reference line. Okay, so we wanna find VBY, so let's leave that alone. VAY, what's that gonna be? Well, it's gonna be zero, right? Because if I look at A, I just had an X component. For velocity. So this goes to zero. Ay is going to be the negative 32.2, right? So we're going to have minus 2 times 32.2 feet per second squared, and then we need our change in displacement. So our final y would be what? If this is our reference line. So measuring from here, well, it'd be we're just about at the ground, right? So let's say y is zero. And then our initial position in the y direction, we were up 1,500 feet, right? So we would have minus 1,500 because we're saying 
y is positive going up. Okay, only unknown here is VBY, so we can solve for that. And we get um, that VBY squared is 96,600. And that would be feet squared per second squared. So then VBY, once you do the square root, would be 310.81 feet per second. Now we've got our VBX, our VBY. So we can find the magnitude at B. So we're just going to do VBX squared plus VBY squared. Take the square root. So we got 150 squared plus 310.81 squared. Take the square root of that. And then VB is 345.11 feet per second. Okay, so now we've got this. Um, if you wanted to write it over here, you could. So we would have our VBX going in this direction, right? Because it's positive. And then our VBY would be going down here. Okay, you can't even see that Y, but there's a Y there. So this is our velocity, magnitude velocity at this point. And the next thing I want to do is I need to find my direction angle. So my direction angle would be this angle here. So the angle between the y-axis and my path, or not necessarily path, but that t-axis. So let's find that, and then we'll move on to acceleration. All right, so if we look here, we've got this angle theta. So what we're gonna do is use the arc tangent and opposite, you remember tangents, opposite over adjacent, right? So opposite would be the VBX, adjacent would be VBY. So theta is gonna be the arc tangent of VBX over VBY. So plug in our values, we got 150 over 310.81. So theta, make sure your calculator's in degree mode, would be 25.76 degrees. Okay. Now this diagram is pretty messy here, so let's let's do a new one. All right, we'll scoot this box up here. So we've got that. We said n was this way, t's this way. And now we want to find our acceleration components. Well, do I know the magnitude of acceleration? I do, right? We drew it right here. So it's going to be acceleration due to gravity, because that's the only acceleration we have. So that's going to go straight down. It's 32.2. Okay. And I know this angle right here, right? This was theta. So using this, now I can break this up into N and T components. All right, so we're gonna have an AN here, and then an AT here. So let's go ahead and start with AT. So this is just like doing a force uh, when you break it into X and Y components. Same thing here, we're just looking at N and T now. So this side here for AT is adjacent to theta. So we're going to have 32.2 cosine theta. It's going in the positive T direction, so it's positive. Okay, so there's AT. That's going to equal 29 feet per second squared. Right, so there's our tangential acceleration. And then do the same thing for AN. Now AN is over here, right? So that's going to be opposite the angle. So we're going to have 32.2 sine 25.76. And that's 13.99 feet per second squared. Okay, and again, this is positive because it's going in that positive end direction. The last thing we have to do is find rho. How can we find rho? Well, we'll do the same thing we did up here, right? So AN has to be 13.99. And that has to equal v squared over rho. 
So we'll have our 13.99. And then we want the velocity at this point. So that's going to be the 345.11. And then we square it, put it over row, and then you solve for row, which is 8513.29. Okay, so there you have that one. Okay, so remember when you're dealing with N and T coordinates, everything changes based on your location on the path. Okay, so you can't just assume it's always the same like we do when we use XY, the Cartesian frame, right? Because it's going to change every time. Okay, see y'all next time.